Hey, what's up, guys? John here, and we are going to go through some really, really big news because this is going to be coming to America. The entire economy is changing. Everything's changing. And uh, I think what we can learn here is going to be uh, a few things. First is what's going to be changing to business and how we can restructure our current business strategy, current investing strategy, and what we can do to kind of isolate us from all of these problems that are going to be coming down the road that are, it's not a question, it's a guarantee that it's coming. It's a 100% guarantee. Right now, we look at what's happening now in uh, India, for example. You know, this is this is uh, NPR, New Delhi's air pollution is so bad, officials calling for that, boom, yesterday, right? But it doesn't just, this isn't random. Trust me, this is not random. India's Supreme Court is calling for this in the capital of New Delhi because it's health emergency. Now, we have to remember here that New Delhi, India ranks 94th. Because it reminds me of what we're made of. One what second here. Us going. There's an ad. I think of the sky. I think uh, of clear waters. I think of the Ganga. There we go. Uh, India ranks 94th among 107 countries for global hunger. So ranks 94th, right? And they're going to close down the entire economy of their capital of India, right? So all of these people are already struggling financially over what's happened over the last 18 months. And now what is ultimately going to happen is all the small farmers, the shops, uh, all the people out there that are barely making it, a lot of them are going to slip and fall into absolute poverty. Uh, right now, there's 800 million, approximately, people that are that have food insecurity. So 800 million people out of eight, roughly 8 billion, so a tenth of the world's population. At a hearing Monday, justices ordered authorities to halt all non-essential travel to roads in the nation's capital region. They also told them to close offices in the area, shifting tens of millions of people to work from home. It's unclear if or when this would take effect or how long it might last, Delhi's air quality appeared to ease slightly Monday. The AQI is now the low 400 on a 500 scale, right? Uh, New Delhi schools are already closed this week because of this. That's been about four times the safe limit. Construction sites are also on pause, which ultimately slow the economy. This is all because of the smog across Northern India. It happens every winter as industrial and vehicular uh, emissions mix with smoke from crop burning after the harvest. While farmers have often been blamed for exasperating the pollution problem, government lawyers told the Supreme Court on Monday that crop burning amounts to only 10% of emissions. One justice responded by saying it might have to be even lower. Some of the schools forced to shut this week only have reopened for the first time in nearly 20 months because of this. Meanwhile, India pushed for watered-down language and a final declaration over the weekend in Glasgow, it ended up calling for coal to be phased down. This all comes together, trust me. Phased down rather than phased out, a revision that angered some delegates choking back tears, right? So India gets 70% of its electricity from coal. It is pledged to reduce that amount, but has pushed back against global efforts to ditch coal altogether. So interestingly... This is happening. I, I can't even look at that picture. Um, and you're ranked 94th among 170 nations in the Global Hunger Index. But we look at what the solution is here. This is why we, we really have to pay close attention because this is going to be the biggest thing that we've ever seen. The last 18 months, trust me, it's nothing compared to what the next 18 months are going to bring. So this is, if you, know, if you don't know who these people are, uh, this is, these are real people. This is a real organization. Look here. Uh, there they are. I mentioned this earlier, but this article is something that we need to pay close attention to because this article, same exact people, right? Same people. Emissions fell during this. Let's keep it that way. As the focus shifts from recovering, we'll take decisions to restore economies and support the green agenda or we, we are stuck on the notion that we need to choose between them, right? We're at a pivotal moment when it comes to warming. 
As the focus shifts to rebuilding and recovering from this, we need to make decisions to restore shattered economies, but will they contribute to the commitments in this agreement? There's a silver lining to something that is catastrophic, it's environmental boost and the slowdown for the greenhouse gas emissions that we experienced in the early part of the year, right? So they're slowly moving us here. As industrial output plummeted and as cars disappeared from the roads and planes were grounded, people worldwide noticed a positive effect on the surroundings. So that's what they're trying to get at. They want this, they want less of that. They want more of this impact here. Positive effect on surroundings. The air was cleaner, less pollution, and nature began to restore the balance, okay? Surely they're experiencing a glimpse into this, but the fear is that even before this struck, there were concerns about achieving the target to limit global warming. Are lower emissions just a short-term blip, right? So this is what's happening, but here's where it all comes together. So White House, this, this came out, you know, about 10 days ago, nine days ago, right? But this all comes a part of this package. So White House backed carbon tax site for Biden's climate bill. The White House and at least 49 senators support a proposal to impose an almost 20 ton per ton fee on carbon as a part of Biden's climate and spending legislation. Under the initiative, the cost on carbon dioxide emissions would start at less than $20 per ton and increase over time. So this is why things are so important for all of us to understand. And we need to, I had a call with a couple smart guys about an hour ago. We need to start thinking so, so much bigger because if you have a goal, let's say, of making 200000 or $100,000, when you start factoring in how expensive things are going to be, just for you to hire an employee today, you're thinking 20 bucks an hour, and that employee is probably providing, you know, not that, that, that much value. It's not as if you're getting a, a great management role. You're hiring, you know, just an entry-level employee that would otherwise could work at Walmart for the same 20 bucks an hour. For you to hire a great, employee, you might pay 40 or $50 an hour, right? So that might cost you 55 or 60,000 or more for one employee. So if you ever intend to have employees and have a team, you might spend 200, $300,000 a year on a decent team, not factoring in the cost to pay for yourself, not factoring in the cost for these new carbon credits that people are gonna have to pay for. They're called carbon offsets. So if you wanna travel, if you want to consume certain things and do certain things, this is all in this, I'm going to read it to you, but you're going to have to pay for this. So everything's going up with inflation. Cost of living is going through the roof. Cost to hire people is going through the roof. So people can't think that $100,000 is a lot of money anymore because in the next year, $100,000 might have the purchasing power of $50,000, right? So if you can get to a certain threshold, a real, real, you know, eight-figure net worth in the next three years thinking really big with a really, really good business plan. And that business plan is a forward thinking business plan that's gonna thrive very well into the future. And you can hit those margins, then you're gonna put yourself in a position to where you're not gonna be as impacted. But if you're making $100,000 in three years or 75,000 in three years, all of these new costs are gonna make life so much harder. I mean, they're talking about an 80 or an eight cents per mile tax just driving. So if you drive 20,000 miles a year, it's going to cost you another 2,500 bucks just to drive. And then you factor in the cost of how much gas has increased, uh, the cost to repair vehicles. Everything is just going through the roof. It's nuts, right? It, I don't make up the rules, but I'm just looking at the facts and I'm saying, you know, what options do people have? People have to think big now or they're going to be dependent on the state. You know, this is kind of what they're trying to push for. So, Cost of carbon is $20 per ton and will increase over time with revenue possibly rebated back to some customers who are dedicated to help fossil fuel workers amid the transition to clean energy, White House said, on the sidelines of COP26 on Saturday. We have 49 out of 50 votes from Democrats in the Senate. The Democrat from Rhode Island said, if the Senate passes it, the House has assured us they will pass it and the White House has assured us the president will sign it into law. White House is still trying to win over 
Mnuchin's a Democrat from West Virginia who is a swing vote in the legislation who said he would oppose it. The Democrats on Friday put off a vote on the $1.75 trillion in expanded social benefits, climate measures, tax increases, which would then go to the Senate. Economists have long favored a carbon tax as a straightforward approach to countering the change by embedding the cost of global warming into the very products driving it from oil to gas to steel to cement. So it's not just going to be for you to travel. Everything is going to get more expensive. So we can look at, you know, how to limit this. So you can consume less seasonal products, according to them, no strawberries in the winter, less meat, you know, select fish, reusable shopping bags, right? These are things that people are like, oh, okay, I could probably live with that. Trust me, it gets worse. Uh, because what happens now is if you want to really, really change this in their eyes, they'll, these industries, so transportation, so transportation is a real big problem. They, they're not going to want that. Electricity, it's also a problem. Industry, the sector burns fossil fuels primarily for energy through many companies that produce goods from raw materials, must produce chemical reactions in the manufacturing process. So just realize that this stuff here, right? If they're paying more to produce the products, the products are going to obviously, they're going to factor in these additional costs with what you're going to pay for this. So don't just think it's just going to be your cost. Everything is going to be going up because of this. Everything. So that's why they say, you know, there's going to be less meat consumption because people aren't going to be able to afford it. It's probably going to be, you might go to a, get a steak for 250 bucks or 300 bucks. I've seen things on TikTok now with these little ribeyes like this, so like 75 bucks at like grocery stores. So prices, they're getting absolutely uh, insane. Turkeys are, you know, twice what they were last year. Commercial residential, 11.6 burning fossil fuels for heat using products that contain greenhouse gases. And the method by which it's disposed of directly impacts the amount of greenhouse gas released. Agriculture, right? And then direct emissions, emissions that come from sources that are controlled in the business, direct. So, but here's what they're trying to do here. So they want you to adopt practices that minimize the fuel use, right? Such as maintaining company vehicles for optimum performance and encouraging employees to carpool or take more fuel efficient transportation. You know, we've seen that in Biden's infrastructure bill, his plans, what he wants to do, he wants to get 800,000 cars off the road he wants people to use public transit a lot more. Uh, incorporating more fuel efficient vehicles. You know, he's talked a lot about that. Uh, reducing energy demand, switching fuels that run your machinery, investing in renewable energies, identifying suppliers that prioritize sustainable sustainability performance. This is a whole new way of living. And they're starting, they're gonna start in India. You know, America is gonna, this is gonna be coming to America. You know, we, we can't be in denial. They, they say this. We, this is what they're talking about. This is what's going to be coming here. So what they're after here is supporters say that carbon levy could lure private investment to emission reduction technology that otherwise isn't cost effective while helping fulfill the agreement pledge for the next eight and a half years, right? Stopping a price on carbon also has drawn business support, including from oil companies and the chief trade group. However, industry backers generally want carbon tax imposed as a substitute for existing regulations on greenhouse gases, a trade-off the White House has ruled out. Democrats have worked with Biden admin to hone the plan along with refinements and plan exemption for unleaded gasoline through other petroleum products, including diesel, wouldn't be spared. There are months and months of negotiations in the White House to get them to a place to where they were comfortable with it. The White House didn't immediately respond, request for comment, right? So might be doable enough. Uh, if there's going to be a free fee on carbon as transportation policy, it will come about if it is bipartisan. So if you think that process is going to be fair, then, um, then yeah, deliberations continue on a possible border adjustment to impose corresponding levy on high carbon imported goods. Exactly what I just said. Everything's going to be going up because of this. Um, the finance committee... Committee, the Democrat from Oregon also developing a plan for revenues that will be collected. The strong intention is to find the best way to get it back out to the people. Some of the money could be devoted to helping coal miners and other workers 
who could be displaced by the U.S. ships. Not could, they're 100% going to get displaced. And uh, that there's a, America relies heavily on the fossil fuel industry. So when those jobs start fading away, a lot of people that have worked in these industries, they're not going to be able to just go from, you know, fossil fuels to, let's say, tech. You know, they don't have, they don't have, uh, you know, the education, the experience in those other niches where they can just easily convert. A lot of people that have worked in fossil fuels, you know, their grandfather's fathers worked in fossil fuels. So we're going to definitely see a lot of people, especially like in states like Texas, that could lose their jobs. Price on carbon is clearly where we're headed on, where we need to head, said Michael Bennett, Colorado. One of the great virtues of that is you can use the proceeds of that to help with the transition, right? So we look at this, but then here's how the Mark Cuban, right? He's just he buys fifty thousand in carbon offset tokens, puts them on chain every ten days. So. Billionaire investor Mark Cuban revealed that he's been increasingly involved in the process of tokenizing carbon offsets on the blockchain. Cuban said he's been on 50K in carbon offsets every 10 days. You know, not a big deal. You know, drop, you know, $1.8 million a year in uh, carbon offsets. With the uh, base token, I've been buying 50K in offsets every 10 days, verifying them, putting them on the chain. I'd love to see the same thing and probably more with removal. And BCT. Our reference tokens represent one ten of carbon from the carbon credit issuer, right? The BCT tokens are bridged to Polygon. Meanwhile, the decentralization autonomous organizations, let's see here. I'm still learning a long way to go, but I don't know this platform could apply to the same approach to removal that it has the offsets. So you're going to start to see a lot of people start jumping in here. Even right now, if you're flying, you know, the offset prices are, uh, you know, they're not that expensive as of now, but like, let's just say that you are, let's say that you are, uh, let's see if it's gonna let me zoom in here. Oh, it's not letting me. Um, but yeah, so if you are flying from New York to LA and it's a 3000 mile flight, right? 3000 mile flight and you wanna know how much that is. So it's gonna cost you about 10 bucks Ten dollars that you'll have to pay in additional uh, cost here, but remember they said they're going to start low and then it's going to raise over time. You know, per Bloomberg, they just said that. So if you're booking it on, let's say, skip lagged, right? If you're booking on skip lagged right now, and you say, okay, I'm going to book this flight for, uh, let's see, NYC to Miami or no, excuse me, to Los Angeles, right? So you're gonna go, and you're gonna book it for December 1st, just easy. Uh, we're gonna do just a one way. So we'll do just a one way, and you're gonna see that this flight, December 1st, is 137 bucks, right? So this cost for this flight will increase $10, right? You're like, oh, okay, not bad. But remember, the cost to repair that, Airplane is going to increase. The cost for fuel is going to increase. The cost to operate is going to increase. The cost for that flight is going to skyrocket. So no longer are you going to be able to get that flight for, say, you know, 100 bucks, like you can do right now if you want to deal with these layovers. 100 bucks, you can fly there, right? 100, yeah. I mean, you have a bunch of options for, like, in the low hundreds or even one below 100, right? So there's no way, in my opinion, that they are going to be able to survive if they don't increase flights uh, dramatically, which is what's going to happen. They're going to increase flights dramatically. And so what they're saying is, how can these offsets be reproduced? So this is factoring in. So an offset is a reduction in emissions of, of dioxide greenhouse gases made in order to compensate for or to offset an emissions made elsewhere. One ton of carbon offsets represent a reduction of carbon right, equivalent to greenhouse gases. So step one, calculate your emissions, individuals, right? You can use that carbon offset calculator, right? So let's just 
mess with this for a second. Um, let's say already calculated your carbon footprint. Project selection. Let's see here. Calculate. Individual. All right, let's see. So you're in the United States and carbon footprint calculations are typically based on annual emissions from the previous 12 months. Enter this period. So we can just do like this. Um, all right. So house electricity. Okay, I have to fill all this stuff out. But um, yeah. So I'm not gonna do all that. But uh, this is what's gonna happen when they have your smart grid and everything set up. They're gonna know exactly how much you know electricity that you're using, natural gas, um, heating oil, all this. So. If you go over, then you're gonna have a bill. So what I think is ultimately gonna happen, and this is, I'm gonna kind of bring this back to business, is what I think is gonna happen, the businesses that are gonna do well are gonna be the businesses that ideally are online, that ideally don't involve a lot of transportation, that uh, you can outsource your talent and you are making a ton of money. Those are the businesses you know, with low overhead, those are the businesses that are going to do well in the future. You know, if you have an advantage in AI and robotics and tech uh, apps, any of those things obviously is going to be a really, really uh, big competitive advantage for most people. But this is what's going to happen. Things are just going to get crazy expensive. And what they're going to do now is with this whole situation, we have people like Bill Gates saying that, you know, he's, you know, Beyond Meat, he's a, a big, big investor in Beyond Meat. He's saying that, Cows and other green gas eating species have a digestive system that emits methane and methane is a very powerful greenhouse gas. And so cows alone account for about 6% of global emissions and we need to change cows. That's a massive statement. Just cows alone, of all the categories, the one that has gone better than I would have expected five years ago is this work to make artificial meat. So you have people like Impossible or Beyond Meat both of which I invested in. You can go to Burger King and buy an Impossible Burger. It's slightly healthier for you in terms of less cholesterol. It's dramatic reduction in methane emissions, animal cruelty, manure management, and the pressure that meat consumption puts on land use. So that's what we're gonna be seeing here. It's really just quite incredible to me to watch how everything is changing. It's changing so, so fast. But what's gonna be really fascinating for me to watch and for all of us really to watch is they say that 40% of carbon in the environment is through real estate, through property, right? And so a lot of building codes are changing. You have building codes in Miami that are set to change. Uh, next year, Los Angeles, same thing. New York, same thing. Uh, changes across the board are coming. They're going to be coming in a really, really big way. My advice to real estate investors is one, know your market. Two, make sure you're not too leveraged. Three, make sure you have emergency funds. And four, understand where the building codes are going inside of your market. And be, be smart and strategic. A lot of people are just kind of leveraged to the gills with 80% loan to value on their assets, hoping that things are just going to continue in this parabolic trajectory. It's simply not going to happen. Everything is changing right now, and the writing's on the wall. I mean, no pun intended, but it is, uh, it's right on the wall. They, he literally shows this to you. He shows it to you right here. He says that we're doing exactly what the squad tells us to do. You go on the website. Go on the website. You look at it. That's what they're saying is, is, uh, is going to happen. So... Smart investors, smart business people, they're aware of this. They're saving money. They're investing uh, intelligently into the future. And they're building out a rock solid plan based around the facts of where things are going. Study these infrastructure bills. Study these packages because what's happening is going to impact all of us. And those that are educated, that are smart, 
that understand these things are going to have a massive competitive advantage over the 99.9% .9 of people that think that this is just never going to happen. It's happening. It's here. Get ready. Subscribe. Also, hit the uh, hit the like button. Helps share this content. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at some of these uh, some of the comments here, so I can catch up with everybody. Um, I appreciate that. Thanks so much, man. Uh, and I agree. He definitely will not. Um, I ride a bicycle everywhere. Yeah, I gotta try to do the same. Apparently. Um, yes, they will. Uh, wow, I sent you a message a while back saying that the world perceives India. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think I got the message. Uh, obey. Let's see. I lived in Hut for five years. Salute. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, you, well, you know Bill is eating burgers. You know, he's eating, uh, probably eating steaks while everyone else is going to eat things that are made, you know, wherever he says. I said it would go a long way to elevate India. How much of the footprint does Kamala? Yep. Uh, politicians have. Yeah, exciting times, though. Anyway, I try to see the positives and everything. You know, I'm not here just to be like, oh, you know, you know, India is closing down for pollution and this is happening here and that's happening here. I'm just saying this because this is stuff that I'm generally interested in. I'm really curious about it. I'm studying this and learning about this myself. Like when I'm laying in bed, I'm looking at stuff on my phone, wondering, okay, would this business do well in two or three years? Would this business fail? What pitfalls could I be stepping into? I'm studying these um, bills, these infrastructure packages, because it is just so important. And the amount of things inside of these bills that are gonna impact our lives, it's just unbelievable. It's like, it's ridiculous. And uh, I have so many smart people around me that are just like, ah, that's never gonna happen. You know, that's a conspiracy. So dude, look at it. I mean, it, it is happening. You go to NPR, you go to look at what's happening in Austria right now. Look at what's happening in Germany. You look at all these other places all around the world. It's, it's hard to ignore. And uh, that's why right now I'm expanding. I'm expanding my team. I'm expanding my business. I'm expanding how I'm going to be investing my money. I'm changing up nearly everything right now because I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, how things work in good and bad economies. So, for example, I'm reading this book right now called More Money Than God. It's about, you know, I just started, it's like 30 pages in. But it's about private equity investors and people that really made a ton of money over the last 100 years. And what one guy did, and he beat all the markets, was that he would bet into the best companies, and then also he would take short positions. And so in the event that the market skyrocketed, he'd make money. In the event the market dipped, he would still make money. And the returns, he was making like 400% a year on average throughout his career, beating Warren Buffett and a lot of the all-time greats. So just studying and learning as much as possible. Going on uh, on some websites and buying some books and, and trying to learn from smart people because the world's changing so fast. And what's going to happen is that there's going to be, you know, the 0.05% that are going to basically, what I believe, is that they're going to take their capital, take their power, and they're going to streamline most small businesses out of existence. They have the uh, technological advantage. They have the capital advantages. They have the, the power. And when these small businesses can't withstand these ups and downs in the market, the rising costs, the rising employee costs, they can't handle all this. What are they going to do? A lot of them are going to close down and the big corporations are going to dominate. So I'll catch you guys on the next live stream. Um, smash that like button. Subscribe here for real honest advice and to keep you guys up to date on what's happening in the economy. All right, guys. See you later.